It's now therefore time for members' statements. The, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased today to rise on World Alzheimer's Day. Alzheimer's is a form of dementia specifically affecting thought, memory, and language. Alzheimer's disease is irreversible as the cells and tissues within the brain are destroyed. Over time, this affects one's ability to think, feel, and to remember. Early signs of Alzheimer's include memory loss that affects day-to-day -day abilities, difficulty performing familiar tasks, problems with language, disorientation in space and time, impaired judgment, problems with abstract thinking, misplacing items, changes in mood, behavior, personality, and loss of initiative. There is, unfortunately, no cure for Alzheimer's disease, but a healthy lifestyle may help reduce your risk. There are several treatments available and medications that may delay the progress of the disease and improve the quality of life. The number of people who are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease is increasing globally. As the baby boom, boomers age, we will witness a dementia crisis within our health care system. Caregivers and family members spend an average 100 hours a month caring for their loved one. Help in everyday tasks such as bathing, meal preparation, and dressing is needed for someone living with this disease. It is critical to ensure that there are proper supports in place for caregivers, as caring for someone with Alzheimer's can be quite overwhelming. Speaker, we are still waiting for the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to release Ontario's Alzheimer's strategy, and hopefully it will be released soon. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, my constituency staff Thank has been you. trained in dementia care. I encourage all MPPs. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nickelbelt. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Sunday on the 25th of September, there will be the seventh anniversary of the Franco-Ontarian uh, Day, as well 40th anniversary of the Franco-Ontarian flag. And there's a lot of activity to highlight the, uh, the day, in particular the banquet of the day in the Akfu of Sudbury, uh, which will take place at the Collège Boreal in Sudbury on Friday. 400 students of various schools will be dressed in white and green and will participate in games of the Francophonie at Valterral. There will be a competition and the people, the kids will build uh, flags and will decorate the gym. Uh, I invite also the government to make a small announcement. As uh, the Francophones were uh, absent from the throne speech, you could announce that there was a, a governing council for the creation of a Franco Francophone University of Ontario, and or maybe change the uh, changing uh, the law for the French language services. Uh, people are invited. Good Franco Ontarian Day and Ontarian Day to all. Thank you, Speaker. Merci beaucoup. Further members' statements. The member from Brampton, um, Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, posters featuring a photo of a man with a beard and wearing a turban were sprouted across the University of Alberta campus with hatred comments along with hashtags. It was just one of the several racist posters discovered across the Edmonton campus on Monday. We must all condemn the actions of the individuals that circulated these posters around the campus. A university is a space that is open to all people, and we must take pride and strength in our diverse community across this nation. These racist posters do not reflect the inclusiveness that Canada is renowned and best known for. Sikhism is a major world religion that started on the principles of, of equality and social justice, principles that could guide our everyday lives. University and college campuses in Ontario should be safe spaces for students from all backgrounds to live, learn, work and play. It is unacceptable for any student to be discriminated against based on their religion, ethnicity, gender or race. Our government has created the Ontario Anti-Racism Directorate to help add a government-wide anti-racism perspective to the policies, programs and services that touch every one of us. Ontario has a lot to be proud of when it comes to diversity and inclusion and battling syst uh, systemic racism. By working together, we can take another step towards building an Ontario and a Canada where everyone is able to reach their full potential. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, Speaker. I rise uh, today to congratulate Gincor Industries in my riding on being, on being recognized as one of Canada's fastest growing companies, Speaker, for the second year in a row. 
Last week, Canadian Business Magazine once again named Mattawa's own Gincor Industries in their annual ranking of Canada's fastest growing companies. Their inclusion on this prestigious list is evidence of their innovative thinking, smart strategy, and sheer grit. That's what Mattawa is known for, Speaker. Since 1978, Gincor has produced some of the best built, best backed specialty trucks in Canada. You'll see their dump trucks all over North America. As Gincor President and CEO Luke Stang said, when you see that Gincor logo on a mud flap on a vehicle in front of you, that means you're seeing the end result of the hard work our men and women put into every job. Speaker, they are also a vital a member of the business community in Mattawa and a truly important employer. You see their name attached to some of the area's biggest attractions and charities. I congratulate, congratulate Luke and the entire team at Mattawa's Gincor Industries for their well-deserved and second uh, annual accomplishment. Thank you. For your member, for this member from London West. Uh, today, in recognition of National Tree Day, my office is one of 31 London businesses and organizations that is distributing free seedlings to Londoners. I want to congratulate Reforest London for coordinating this initiative to grow London's tree canopy and to bring the forest city closer to our million tree goal. National Tree Day raises awareness of the enormous benefits of trees, which include cleaner air, reduced energy consumption, increased property values, improved health outcomes, and stronger neighbourhood connections. There are social justice benefits as well. Research shows that planting trees in disadvantaged neighbourhoods is a key poverty reduction strategy. For all these reasons and more, in 2014, the City of London released its Urban Forest Strategy, a comprehensive 20-year roadmap to protect and enhance our city's urban forest. The strategy recognizes that urban forests are vital infrastructure assets, as valuable and worthy of investment as roads and bridges. Yet in many communities, urban forests are under attack from urban sprawl, invasive pests, and severe weather events. Many municipalities do not have the resources they need to proactively manage their urban forests. Without coordination, research, and funding from higher levels of government, they are effectively on their own. On this National Tree Day, I urge the government to invest in urban forest assets and green infrastructure and to support municipalities in maintaining and enhancing Ontario's urban forests for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. The member famous, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And may I just say hi? I'd also like to say hi to my fellow colleagues in the House this afternoon. And the reason I am sharing that salutation with you is because tomorrow is Say Hi Day in Waterloo Region, in Ontario, and around the world. This is an opportunity for an early reminder for everyone to take part. Say Hi Day encourages elementary and high school students in 170 schools in Waterloo Region to say hi to others within their schools. This activity was launched in 2007 as a way of supporting diversity, inclusion, and community building for students. Say Hi Day provides students an opportunity to get to know each other, understand each other, to connect, and to be inclusive of one another. From junior kindergarten all the way to grade 12, students are learning about the importance of belonging, respect, and kindness, which are valuable lessons to remember throughout one's lifetime. So today, I want to say hi to my constituents in Kitchener Centre, to our German-Canadian community, Schonenthal, to our Romanians, Salut, to our Franco community, Monjourne, to my Italian family, Buongiorno, and to the newcomers in Kitchener displaced by the Syrian conflict, I say al salam wa alaikum. I encourage all members of the House to join me tomorrow in saying hi and promoting the openness and inclusion of all people in the province of Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the member saying this member from Frontenac Lennox, uh, uh, Lanark, Frontenac Lennox and Addington. Thank you so much. First one. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on behalf of my riding of Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox and Addington, I would like to congratulate the achievements of two exceptional Smith Falls athletes and their family. This summer, Brooke Henderson became the first Canadian woman sure. since 1968 to win a golf major thanks to her victory at the 2016 KPMG Women's At the age of 18, she holds the title of the youngest ever winner of the tournament. 
and the second youngest ever winner of a women's major. Brooke Henderson's success has allowed her to reach the outstanding accomplish accomplishments of being ranked second in the world golf rankings, the best ranking ever by a Canadian male or female. On top of this achievement, Brooke had the honour to represent Canada in the Women's Olympic Golf Tournament in Rio alongside with her sister, Brittany. Brooke, Brittany and the Henderson family are remarkable role, model, role models for young athletes. Their success is a testimony to their commitment and demonstrates that there is no substitute for hard work and perseverance. I want to recognize and celebrate the leadership and example Brooke and Brittany have set for us and let them know that we are proud and inspired by their achievements. To the Henderson family, we thank you for your inspiration and wish you continued success as you contribute to the world of golf and wherever else your heart may lead you to. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Bermuda, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2012, aggregate truck drivers protested the unfair ticketing based on axle weight infractions. The government acknowledged the problem and implemented an exemption to acknowledge that that practice was indeed unfair. However, four years later, without any notice, the government has now expired this exemption. This exemption no longer is in place, and drivers are again being ticketed for the very same unfair practice which the government acknowledged many years ago. Now, this issue is not only impacting aggregate truck drivers, but it also impacts dump truck drivers, where the government has known about these problems but fails to do anything about it. The government has known about this particular problem for many years, some say up to a decade, but the government has not done anything about it. Now again, aggregate truck drivers are protesting this unfair practice of axle weight infractions. They have two major demands. One, the government should immediately end all infractions based on axle weight infractions because Truck drivers cannot control where loaders or shippers actually place the material over which axle and how much weight is placed. Secondly, the drivers need a permanent solution. Temporary solutions are simply not working. It shouldn't be the case that drivers have to protest every couple of years just to demand fairness. The government has full control over the regulations that impact the drivers. This is a matter of the Ministry of Transportation. The government has the power to address this problem. I call on the government to immediately implement a solution to this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. And I rise today to pay tribute to Don Panos for my riding of Davenport, who passed away this past July. Don was a founding member of the St. Clair Gardens Business Improvement Area, which was formed in 1985 and served on its board as chair for most of those years. As owner and operator of Don's Meats, a well-known business in Davenport since the early 1970s, Don offered a no-nonsense small business perspective on BIA issues. The growth of his enterprise and its prospects for the future resulted from its innovative techniques, excellent customer service, good marketing strategies, employment creation, community involvement and participation in business and social activities. As the local member of provincial parliament, I was fortunate to have known Don Panos and to have worked alongside him prior to being elected and since being elected. His involvement within the Davenport community and community development has been an inspiration. Everywhere you look, you can see Don's tremendous influence in the friendship and cooperation between the businesses and local residents that led to the revitalization, beautification and continued gentrification of St. Clair Avenue West. Don Panos had become the soul of the St. Clair Gardens BIA that made life better for all those who had the privilege of knowing him. Last weekend, I had the honour of attending the St. Clair Gardens BIA Corn Roast, an annual event that happens every year at the end of the summer in Davenport and one that Don loved to attend. This event was a fantastic part and is a fantastic part of the St. Clair community and served as a memorial to the hard work that Don did in our community. We are truly thankful for Don's work. Don will surely be missed, and I know that his work and legacy will live on in Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore now time for reports by committees.